Speaking of scams and innovation, depending or innovation, depending how you want to look at it, Dogecoin was in the news last week or well, this week because the CEO of, of AMC, Adam, Aaron, uh, actually tweeted that he has created the Dogecoin poll and he has received the most reviews, or reads, retweets ever for his tweets. He asked if AMC should uh, accept Dogecoin. And out of uh, 40,000 votes, 77% said yes, said yes. So now he's trying to figure out, he said, we need to figure out how to do that. Stay tuned. So it seems that Dogecoin has become the most popular coin by a huge margin. And so now AMC is trying to see if they could accept it. Uh, what's that all about? Well, look at the chart. I mean, here it, it's down for the week even now or was and you know it's not it's not going anywhere it's a broken uh coin it was never intended it was intended to make fun of cryptocurrency right the but people, it seems that a large amount of people still hold it so well that's what I mean. the people that you know it's a bunch of retail people, retail people. and i mean you know uh, you really want to follow the crowd and uh, everything i mean uh, you don't i mean you went into a stock uh it's like the same as AMC stock, um, I would say. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it for a long-term home. You know, I, I suppose. Right. Might but be. that's what I mean. That AMC is trying to capitalize on uh, the latest Bitcoin. Well, trend that's fine. I just like think that. I think it's broken, and and I would say it's it's it'll slowly, you know, value will slowly come out of it, and and not you know it 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 had it's manic run back here in April. And I, you know, I think it blew off and it's, um, it, you know, I just think there's, there's, um, uh, there, there's, it doesn't do it. It's let's put it this way. What does it do besides, uh, that Bitcoin does not do. That's what it comes down to that. You could say that there's a unique value proposition or an Ethereum, or an Algorand, or an Avalanche, or a Binance Smart Chain, or any of these others. But what's the unique value proposition for Dogecoin? It's a meme, and that's it. It's a meme. So and is it less secure than Bitcoin? Is no, it's much less, much, much less. Absolutely. I mean, let's look at it this way. I mean, the market cap is, um, oh, do I have that here? I mean, it's, it, it has nowhere near the market cap. It has nowhere near the hash power. The the um, unlike Bitcoin, uh, which has a um, a maximum issuance of twenty one million Bitcoin, oh, yeah. there's already um, hundreds of billions of Dogecoin, uh, or I think actually there's trillions, and there is no upper limit on the supply. It just keeps getting generated um, like at the same rate forever. There's, there's absolutely no reason to consider it an investment. It's what it is, it's um, kind of uh, newbie friendly, okay? And I, and I think people that um, have not played in the space at all, they don't, they're not comfortable with um, a lot of people, they, they're jumping in because they've heard stuff is going up. They're not the sort of people that in the late stages of, you know, in 1998, you know, they heard that AOL was going up. And so they bought AOL and they had AOL on their computer at home. And so they bought AOL. And that was their only thinking. Well, I've got AOL. All my friends have AOL. It's going up. And it's the same thing with Dogecoin today. It's, and it's got a dog right. and the dog is funny. And that's what it, what it comes down to is there's no, uh, no rationale to Doge, Dogecoin um, other than the kind of fun of it. You know, like Vitalik, Vitalik Baterin, he had some, he had like, you know, 10 million Dogecoin or something at one point because it, you know, it was like, trading for like, you know, whatever, one one hundredth of a cent or something like that in its early days. 
And he bought some as kind of a joke or he mined some maybe even as kind of a joke because it was just something funny. It was like having a crypto punk today, except it was, you know, $10 of Dogecoin or $100 or something instead of paying, you know, $300,000 for a crypto punk. It was something that was fun. And um, he, he sold it off, you know, like earlier this year because you know, it was like, well, I think he donated it to charity because um, he, you know, he couldn't believe how much it had, had, had risen. It was a it was a, a fun kind of joke, but the uh, I think it's now yeah let's look here, so um, it's got a okay so total supply infinite right, the current circulating supply is one hundred thirty one billion, and so that gives it a twenty seven billion dollar valuation, but again the um, the the total supply is of uh, you know, the ultimate supply is infinite. And just keep keep growing uh, at at the same rate um, indefinitely, and and so the um, but you know I think briefly it was like the number three coin. Now it's number ten. It'll be number twenty in um, in in a year, and the, the, some of these others like like Luna. Altera, Avalanche, Binance, Cosmos, Chainlink, Algorithm, you know, all of these are, there's real innovation there. And well, you know, I may what, not What about be, Theta? Somebody in the comments asked about if you, what do you think about Theta? Do you know that? Theta is a little bit of a different, um, uh, there, there could be some value there. I haven't done uh, a lot of research on it. I could, but it's, um, it's interesting because it um, is um, uh, about like a mo mobile um, payment system, mobile transfers of value, and it's um, it's an it's an interesting idea. I don't see it here in the top coins, but it it's um, I think depending on what service you look at. Let's you know, let's look. oh I don't even see it here. You know, there's there's some some people who don't don't like it. I think it's um, it's sort of uh, not a like a, a true crypto asset in a sense, but I don't dismiss it. And I think that uh, there could be some value there, but I don't see it. It's not on CoinGecko at all. Um, but. Um, but there, there could be some value there. I have, a, I, I'm not as familiar with it as I am with, um, you know, some the the ones that are on this list here. But, but um, and uh, yeah, I think that that Dogecoin's just going to drop down this list. It may not um, collapse in value back to one cent or whatever. But it, um, I don't, I, I see a lot of these just surpassing it. Over the, over the next year, because like you know, an avalanche or a Luna, I mean, they're really doing things that, or you know, polka dot, you know, some of these others, they're really doing things that there's a lot of innovation, and and they're they, they've got a lot of um, transaction volume, and I mean, who's what? What are people doing with Dogecoin except trading it? Um, no, if the AMC takes it, they might. You know, buy um, whatever a fifteen dollar um, ticket at a theater or something with it, which uh, it means something, but it's like it's more of a gimmick than anything. And um, I, I, I guess I'm just you know I'm I'm not I I'm gonna stick with ones that have where there's an actual there's actual developers that are developing for it. And they're building new projects and our new projects launching every day. And there are exciting things that you read about that are coming. And there's um, a roadmap uh, and, and all of these things. I mean, just like you have with a company, right? And, um, and so that's what I look for. And Dogecoin doesn't have any of those things. Right. If there's not even any developers left. The people that built it, they're doing something else with their lives now. They, 
they made a lot of money by uh, building this, but I, I, you know, I think they might still have some, but they, they don't really, you know, they're not really involved anymore. Uh, they moved on to other things. So I, that's kind of what I, what I think, I, I guess I've, I just see it as um, a, yeah, it's, it's um, not where the future is. Um, and whereas, you know, some of these others, I, you know, what I've, what I've um, said in the past is that really you, um, if you can avoid the meme stuff and, and put, you know, the best places to put money if you're looking to invest in a space is really in the platform coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. And then I would have, I don't like, I personally don't like uh, XRP, Ripple, but but then, you know, maybe some Binance coin or Polkadot, um, Luna, Avalanche, and so on. You know, these are, these are the, the ones that are, that are, they're going to grow. They're going to take up a, a slice of the pie. And uh, not all of them are going to survive and do well. Some might just, you know, that sur survive, but they, um, and it's, it's when you're in a really dynamic market, you have to kind of spread your capital a little bit because you don't know exactly how things are going to turn out. And, but what you do know is that with something like Dogecoin where there's no development happening. I mean, maybe um, there's a little bit, but there's like no firm on its own that it doesn't get money from Elon Musk or something. There's no firm that's saying, well, our strategy is to develop for Dogecoin. Um, no, they, they're thinking, well, we developed for um, Ethereum and then we'll be able to quickly port it over to Binance, to, uh, to Luna. What to about the network effect? Isn't there more people using uh, Dogecoin than Bitcoin? Isn't that some value to that? But but what does it do? That's the I thing. Think you I mean, it's, well, like he is just a, it's a Bitcoin imitator, right. basically. Okay, so with the bigger so network, so shouldn't it be? Oh, so it's one thing to say to be an Ethereum imitator, where um, you know the 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 criticism of Ethereum is that transaction fees are high because it's still a proof of work um, transaction system, uh, which is converting the proof of stake, but until that happens, um, transactions can be at certain times quite expensive on the Ethereum network. Then they are compared on something like Avalanche, which you can use the same smart contract language on Avalanche as what you use on Ethereum. And, and so you could take uh, some smart, some program be written on Ethereum, move it right over the Avalanche and there might be some things you need to change, but it would mostly work uh, without a lot of um, major changes. And and so, but it's proof of stake, and so it's fast and cheap compared to what uh, compared to Ethereum. Now, right now, Ethereum, uh, all of these what's called layer twos, several layer twos have launched that are all proof of stake and they're very cheap. And so, a lot of people. Um, myself included, have moved a fair amount of assets on Ethereum onto Optimism or Arbitum or uh, some of the these others, um, minor, smaller ones. But the um, but that's um, you know, so Ethereum is adapting to this. Uh, but but the the fact is that it could be that Cardano, for example, that they might. Um, just have better relationships with certain sectors of the economy or avalanche and they grab um, and own a whole niche and and um, you know they 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 own that niche completely and and they they do really well with it and you know that's how markets emerge that you don't just have um, it could be like Coke and Pepsi where you're fighting over the same customers and so on I suppose that could happen but I see it more more likely that there will be you know, a, a couple dominant players and, and then 
um, a, a lot of niche players that own their niches very effectively. And um, but what's the niche for Dogecoin? People that are new and they like dog memes. I'm serious. I mean uh, that they're, that they they don't have any expectation for using it for anything other than paying for movie tickets. I mean that's what it comes down to. That that um you know, with with um with Ethereum you can uh, lend money, you can borrow money, you can trade right on chain on chain without using any, a Coinbase or anything. You can uh, enter liquidity provider positions and be become essentially a market maker for decentralized exchanges and earn income on um, being a market maker. And then you can take that market maker position, you can deposit it somewhere else and earn a yield on that. And so you can do all these fancy things with it. What? How can you do that on Dogecoin? You can't. Right, but I mean, comparing Dogecoin to Bitcoin merely, I'm saying if Dogecoin is but, so popular, but what's, the, what's the? It's got a much smaller network, and it's um, you, you there, there's there's um, you know, tens of thousands at least, if not hundreds of thousands, of developers developing things for Bitcoin all the time. All new things. Are they? Figuring out how to migrate it to Dogecoin. What, no. are, what are they developing new for Bitcoin? I thought. What's that? What What new has been developed for Bitcoin? Well, there's a lot of things. Okay, there was what's called a uh, Lightning Network, which is a payment system that's uh, you know been been in use for a few years, and it's not bad. I mean, it's kind of like a layer two on Ethereum. It's a much cheaper way to move money around and so on, and and really fast. And then there's um, a number of different payment apps for uh, retailers and so on that are um, being being built that have been built on Lightning Network. There, there, there are people that say that there's some uh, decentralized finance that's coming to Bitcoin. That I don't really believe it. I think that the value of Bitcoin is simply the size of the network and the uh, hash power that secures it. It's the most secure cryptocurrency and and uh, by far because it has by far the highest hash power and it probably it, it will for a long time. Uh, but the um, but but Dogecoin doesn't doesn't have that at all and it, it's not even close in terms of hash power in terms of number of developers that are con you know, you know that that for example, I mean, like if you know, there, there are things that code that's even been around for years, you can discover a bug or something. There's, as I said, tens or hundreds of thousands of developers that are always looking for something on uh, that's wrong with Bitcoin, but not with Dogecoin. And it's written in a completely different language. So it's not um, like you, if you improve something on Bitcoin that you could just move it over to Dogecoin. You can't. So the, um, and, but the real thing is, is with Dogecoin is infinite supply versus there will only be a maximum of 21 million Bitcoin. It can't be more than that. So, but versus infinite, and it's already in the hundreds of billions of supply. So what's the, um, you know, what's the, you know, the, the, the hypothesis for for holding it they what's the hypothesis i mean with, with bitcoin it's limited supply high security well those pointers has high usage more popularity among young people potential growth rate cheaper oh. fees uh they could always limit i mean i'm just saying hypotheticals they could always limit oh, okay. don't take my advice and put your money in dogecoin then no, i don't, I don't I, I mean, I, i'm just playing I'm devil's advocate happy with, uh, people in our money i'm because see it just it means is. that my investments are lower value and they're better value to jump in on so i i don't try to persuade people not to make bad investments i tell them what i think and if they want to go against that that's fine and um they'll, they'll, they'll probably not be happy with with the result um and and that's my assessment and i think that you know dogecoin it's a meme that's it that's what it is it's a meme and if you want to buy a meme buy dogecoin 
I agree. I'm not advocating Dogecoin. I'm just comparing. I'm just saying there's no there's 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 nothing there besides a meme, really. And and the people, the young people that are it there's a difference between young people and young people that don't have any money. Okay. That if it's young people that have a little bit of money, then that would be one thing. But no, the people that are that jump dump into Dogecoin are young people that don't understand how to analyze investments and also don't have any money. And they're jumping into something because it costs it's 20 cents per Dogecoin, but they don't understand the idea of, well, there's hundreds of billions of this versus there's right now like 18 million Bitcoin and there's hundreds of billions of this one. It's not cheap Bitcoin. You know, if, if you split a stock, you don't have more stock. You don't own more of the company. And anybody who understands investments understands that. If you have two nickels, you don't have more money than if you have a dime. And because the nickels are bigger. I mean, that doesn't make me, it's, it's, it's stupid. And it's, it's a naive, unsophisticated person that thinks that sort of that way when it comes to investments. And I think that's, who gets attracted to Dogecoin is it attracts people that are not sophisticated investors because it's comforting and it's meme and it's a fun dog. It's fun. It's non-threatening. It's not like you don't go to a um, meetup and there, you know, there's people wearing, um, you know, the um, come and take it with a gun on it, t-shirts and, um, you know, uh, uh, hats with the big Bon Mises on them, you know, and you don't have any of that. Uh, you, you, it's just, it's kind of bubbly, fun people and, and not these prickly Bitcoiners or these um, geeky Ethereum people. Um, it's fun. Whereas, yeah, there's a culture around each one of these points. And, and what I just was discussing was a little bit of the stereotype, right? And these prickly anarcho-capitalists as Bitcoin maximalists and geeky, um, you know, Vitalik Buterin kind of people behind Ethereum. I mean, these are stereotypes, but there's a little bit of a kernel of truth to these stereotypes too. Uh, because, but uh, but anyway, it's I I um, I'm going to need to go, but. Uh, yeah, but anyway, I would not recommend uh, anyone uh, put money in Dogecoin. And like I said, it's going to be number 20 or 30 on this list in market cap in a year. And um, and as a lot of these others that were in the top 10, like Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin, a year ago, they were in the top 10. Okay. And they're going to be in the top. They're going to be like between number 30 and number 40 a year from now, because the the players that are rising, the coins and platforms that are rising, they have a lot of, you know, a lot of really smart people that are developing for them and that want to make them a success. Whereas um, on a Litecoin, the founder sold all of his Litecoin back in 2018. And he, you know, might weigh in on a project every now and then, but he doesn't even own it anymore. And it's um, a zombie project, basically, that was intended to be a cheaper Bitcoin at one point. But it, it doesn't do anything that Bitcoin doesn't do. It has faster transaction times. And that's it. That was the value uh, that was added. Um, but it's, it's not gone anywhere. As Bitcoin Cash, you know, it was once... Um, you know, people insisted that it was going to take over for Bitcoin at one point. And there are people that will still insist that it's going to. And it's done nothing but drop in, um, in, in market cap. It was bigger than Ethereum at one point um, in, in market cap. Uh, and, but it's done nothing but drop since then. One, you, you've got one Ethereum or one Ether and one Ether Classic. And they, they were, there was, you know, the, the only reason that 
Ether and not Ether Classic ended up being the the one priced at three thousand dollars a coin is because the um, the miners and developers they gravitated toward Ethereum, not to Ethereum Classic, and that's the same uh, logic that I'm using to say that Dogecoin is going nowhere, and Bitcoin is going to be around for a long time because the development activity, the users, all of the activity and all the innovation and the ideas are on the, the main coin and not on these um, you know, kind of beside projects. And um, the only reason there's all these projects, like, you know, like I said, the Avalanche and Polygon and, and so on, that, I mean, Polygon doesn't really compete with Ethereum, but Avalanche does, Binance does, uh, Solana, Cosmos, I mean, they all do it to some degree, Algorand. Um, they, they, you know, they have their own rationale that's slightly different than Ethereum. Not all of these are going to survive. I don't know precisely which ones. I have my viewpoint, but I, I, I don't know exactly which ones are really going to survive, but all of them probably won't. Probably half of these competitors will be gone in our be zombie projects like Dogecoin in you know five years, and they'll be like uh, something like EOS, which I don't even see on the list. It was you know, it was a top ten project. It they did a four billion dollar ICO in 2018, which was at a time that um, the market was much smaller. It maybe got to 500 billion in market cap. Um, but, uh, but something like, you know, like a uh, EOS where I don't even know where it is, but the, uh, the fact is it's, it's not even in, um, it's, it's not even in, um, you know, the, the top 20 now. Let's see where, where it is, 44. So, you know, this is one that uh, was the Ethereum killer. EOS, oh, by some, um, by some um, people's opinion, uh, EOS was supposed to stand for Ethereum on steroids. It was supposed to be the better Ethereum. Ethereum 3.0. And here it is, number 44. It was number five or six just two years ago. And Gary Gensler, in his lectures at MIT, <laughs> he said, he said, this was in 2018, and it's on his smart contract and dApps video that you can find on YouTube. He said that EOS is, um, it's a real project and it's going to be around for a long time and it, and it, and it could triumph over Ethereum. And so, that was, the, that, it's not like he's stupid. It's just that was a mainstream opinion back in 2018. Right. And that represented kind of the establishment view in 2018 that it was there because there was a, a big software corporation behind the OS and still is. And there was a guy behind the OS, the founder of it, who now has moved on to other things. But he was, he'd launched a couple of projects before and, and he and his brother had launched projects before until he was just, he got a lot of money from Wall Street people. So it was a very natural thing for Gary Gensler to say, this is, you know, this project is going places and it's going to be around for a long time and really powerful. And it's, it's, it's kind of failed uh, as a project. I'd say it's, 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 um, at most, uh, like what, uh, that's a $3 billion, $3.9 billion market cap, uh, which is not, um, nothing, uh, but it's, it's not, and it's not a threat to, uh, it, it's one one hundredth the size of Ethereum and market cap right now. So this, this is, um, this is the nature of a new asset class. You're, you're seeing all of the, you know, the, the process of you know, um, creative destruction happening 
in real time. And it happens much more rapidly in crypto than it does in stocks. And that's not a bad thing. Um, and and I, I think that um, the regulatory agencies, if they let this play out, it will, uh, what will result is a set of um, very strong players that, you know, are, all the bugs have been worked out and they're very, very solid products. And the ones that fall by the wayside, you know, they fell by the wayside for a reason. They weren't propped up like governments like to do. And uh, that's, they, they far more often prop up losers than correctly pick winners, right? And almost always government pick the losers to prop up. The, the failing companies, the ones that made bad decisions, the stupid management, and they treat them like, you know, this precious egg, you know, that can't be um, allowed to be cracked when the best thing for it is you make scrambled eggs out of it <laughs> and then crack it and let it, you know, just eat it and, and be done with it. And, or if it's rotten, just throw it out and, and not, it's not a you know precious egg. It's probably rotten, and and but they prop up the losers. And if it were up to Gary Gensler today, this would probably still be the number six coin, because the government would have propped it up and backstopped it, or you know done something, given it a big subsidy or something. That's what they do. That's their only tools. Right now, the Fed is subsidizing a whole bunch of loser companies that should not have the stock market valuation that they do, but they're being propped up by the Fed's relentless money print. Well, Andy, thank you very much. It was uh, a lot of information. Yep. Lots of cryptocurrencies we have covered today. It's, it's, it's like you said, it's a, it's a new and upcoming uh, class, asset class that has a lot of unknowns in the future. And so thank you for uh, unpacking it for us. Yeah. Well, there, where there is, you know, high returns, there's high risk too. I mean, they're, they're, the two go together. So thank, thank you, you everyone. All right, bye.